Now if uh, you have any statement, conditional statement of type P implies Q, then from this conditional statement, uh, we can derive three types of conditional statements. One is called converse. So if you are able to identify what is P and what is Q in the given conditional statement, and if you change it from P implies Q to Q implies P, that is called as converse of the given statement. One more thing, remember that we are talking about P implies Q here, right? So converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. And contrapositive of P implies Q is negation Q implies negation P. And inverse of Q P implies Q is negation P implies negation Q. Got it? So converse, contrapositive and inverse. So let's take an example. Uh, let's try to take an example uh, which is not logical still since we are discussing about the predicate logic okay so the logic is this see this if today is friday then 2 into 3 equal to 6 let us say this is the statement given and now they have asked you what is the converse of it okay now first thing you should identify is what is p and what is q and many times identifying p and q will be difficult because uh, in the previous video i have given you all the ways in which they can they can represent a conditional statement and because of these many ways of representing the conditional statement it might be difficult for you to understand what is p and q but once you do it this question will be straightforward right so today is friday is definitely p because it is a straightforward statement right if he is given and then is given and 2 into 3 equal to 6 is q right therefore p is this and q is this now what about converse now converse will be q implies p right so what is the meaning of it you have to take q and then p so it is if 2 into 3 equal to 6 then today is friday fine <laughs> see how much logical it is what is the relationship between 2 into 3 equal to 6 and today is friday but such statements are possible in this subject okay it is not english and the next one is contrapositive so what is the contrapositive of this you are supposed to write negation of q implies negation of p now what is negation of q negation of q is if q is 2 into 3 equal to 6 then negation of q is if 2 into 3 is not equal to 6 isn't it then you see this negation of q implies negation of p so what is negation of p then today actually today is friday is p then what will be negation of p today is not friday then today is not friday okay and what about inverse so inverse is negation p implies negation q so if this is p and if this is q then what will be negation p negation p is this one so what is meant if today is not friday this is negation of p isn't it then 2 into 3 is not 6 got it so one type of question that can be asked is they will give you in some form this statement p, p implies q and then they will ask you either converse or controversy or inverse that is one way of one one thing and second thing is there is a concept called as uh, equivalence so the, def the meaning of equivalence is two statements are said to be equivalent if they have the same truth values same truth values so since we are talking about implication we shall take the example of implication and see what is the meaning of uh, this, um, see this equivalence let us say p is here q is here and we are discussing about p implies q
so we know that this is the two table for p implies q only reason why it might be false is whenever p is true and q is false and if you try to put them in a conditional statement then the resulting statement might be false otherwise it is going to be true now incidentally it so happens that this p implies q as well as the compound statement negation p or q these two will have the same truth value you can check it right so negation p or q so if i take negation p these two will become false and this you know false or true this is going to be true false or false this is going to be false and since q is true this is going to be true and since uh, this p is false it is going to be true if you observe this see i didn't do anything you know uh, uh, extraordinary here it is a simple simple logic i have applied from digital logic subject you must be knowing about this uh, only thing that you should observe here is these two have the same truth values therefore these two are said to be equivalent and one way of representing equivalent is like this p implies q is equivalent it is also called as uh, some equivalent symbol right so okay anyway we are going to discuss about it later so let's not get into this as of now we shall see it later okay hmm. so now we say that these two are equivalent right so if you, even if you look at it you can understand some something whenever q is true the value of conditional statement is true and whenever p is false the value of this one is true isn't it see this whenever p is false the value of conditional statement is true and whenever q is true the value of this one is true right and the only reason why it may be false is when negation p is false and q is false if negation p has to be false it means that q has to be true right so it is going to be equivalent now you can think about you can what i would uh, like you to do is you just find out what is the truth value of q implies p and what is the truth value of negation q implies negation p and what is the truth value of negation p implies negation q you can do it as an, as an exercise okay so uh, these three are nothing but converse contrapositive and inverse converse contrapositive and inverse so how do you how do you uh, you know solve it you need not by heart anything here so since p implies q is equivalent to negation p or q q implies p will be equivalent to negation q or p and negation q implies negation p will be equivalent to negation of negation q which is nothing but q or negation p right now if you see this actually uh, these two are equivalent and this one is you know equivalent this one is same as this therefore you can find out that a conditional statement is equivalent to its contrapositive right which means it will have the same truth value true false true true right these two will have same one and what about this it is nothing but p or negation q right and one important thing that you should remember is a conditional statement is equivalent to the contrapositive of it and it is not equivalent to converse or inverse got it so converse and inverse are different and that one is different so these two are equivalent and you should remember about it and one other one other thing is just just see what is converse and what is inverse here converse is equivalent to negation q or p and inverse is also equivalent to negation q or p right therefore these two are equivalent these two are equivalent and these two are equivalent therefore a conditional statement and its contrapositive is equivalent converse and inverse of a statement conditional statement are equivalent so questions can be from any of this and it is very easy to answer these questions okay fine hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits 
So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral. Which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting a, after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.